right, so in today's video, we are going to be going over how to make these tiny little mini uh, granny squares um, that we're gonna put together to make our mini blanket that's gonna go on the back of our couch. So you're gonna need to pick four different colors, um, ones that you know complement each other, and you're going to assign them a letter. So for me, I chose letter A as dark blue, letter B, light blue, letter C, yellow, and letter D is gray. Um, just note that colors A and C will never touch. So for example, um, you're not going to have dark blue and yellow touching each other in these squares here. Um, same thing with uh, B and D, the light blue and the light gray. If you, As you can see, they're never going to be like right up next to each other. Um, for me, this was important to keep in mind um, because even though it may not look like it on the video, um, my gray and my light blue are actually pretty close in color. Um, so that way it just gives my granny squares a little bit more contrast and variation. So just keep that in mind when you pick your colors. We are going to be making four different squares, as you can see here. Um, and these are the order that you're gonna use um, the colors. So for example, square one, so this is my square one. I used color D first, which was my light gray, so that's why the inside is gray. Um, and then I moved on to color A, which was dark blue. So you can see my next string is dark blue. And then my last color was uh, letter B, which was my light blue. So you're gonna follow that pattern for each of these squares, and you're gonna make 10 of each because our blanket is going to be a five by eight um, square. We're not square, but a rectangle. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. The square that I'm going to be making first um, is square number one. So again, we're gonna use colors D, which was my light gray, color A, which is dark blue, and then lastly, color B, which is my light blue. So I'm gonna get started with my gray, and of course, we're going to get started with a slip knot. So we're gonna go ahead and make that. All right, the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to chain two. So one, two, and I am using Karen Simply Soft Yarn um, with a letter F hook, by the way. So in case you're trying to find those same materials, that's what I'm using. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to crochet or eight single crochets into this first chain that I made. So I'm gonna stick my crochet hook in, wrap it around, wrap it around again. So that's gonna be single crochet number one. And I'm just going to do that until I have eight. All right, and the next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and count just to make sure that I have eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight for that last one. So again, at this point I've made 40 different squares. So um, I'm gonna show you kind of the system that I created that helps me keep things organized. So after I finish a, a ring, I'm going to go ahead and cut something. So in this case, I'm gonna cut the tail off and I'm gonna go I'm gonna go ahead and start with my next color. So my next ring is going to be blue, dark blue. So instead of cutting that gray, I'm gonna leave it there. And I'm actually going to attach my new color to the loop that I made, not this yarn here, okay? And the reason why I'm not cutting the gray right away is because leaving it whole until we finish the blue is gonna add a little bit of weight to the end. So all I did was I pulled the blue through I'm going to wrap the tail around, pull it through. I'm gonna stick it back in, kind of that top loop there. Wrap it around, pull it through. And that is going to make a knot when you pull both sides, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna scooch that knot back a little bit like that. I'm gonna pull the gray down just to make that loop a little less big and then I'm going to do two single crochets in each of my eight stitches. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do, instead of starting right with the, my single crochets, I'm actually gonna do a slip stitch with my blue color here, and I'll explain why in the last row why we do that. But, so I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna slip. As you can see, that loop's pretty big, so I'm gonna pull that gray just to kinda keep it a little bit more taut. 
All right, now in my next stitch, I'm gonna do two single crochets. One and two. And I'm just gonna keep doing that all the way around for each stitch that I had made. All right, as we get close to that last stitch, I do wanna show you what I do um, that just makes things a little bit cleaner. So as you can see, we're now on, I'm sorry, <laughs> we're now on the loop that we've, we've tied our, our blue to. So what we're, gonna, what we're gonna do is we have two stitches that we're gonna make. So I'm gonna stick my crochet hook to the right of the knot and do a single crochet. And then I'm gonna stick it to the left of the knot and I don't have a lot of space so I'm just gonna kind of pull that knot down stick to the left pull through and what that does as you can see it forces that knot to the back so we don't have to um, deal with it in the front okay so now what I'm gonna do is again I always want to cut something after I'm done so I'm not gonna cut the blue I want to leave that there because again it's gonna help weigh everything down so instead I'm gonna cut the gray and I'm going to tie my knot. So I'm going to give myself a little slack so I can remove my hook and just a regular, just a regular knot. Um, again, that Karen Simply Soft, I really like the feel of it, but the yarn is really slippery. So I've been finding that when I make knots, sometimes they start to come undone. So that's kind of why I'm just taking extra steps to make sure it's secure. All right, so the next one we're going to do is that light blue color. So I'll grab my light blue yarn. Okay, and I'm gonna do the same thing that I did with the dark blue to attach it. So I'm just pulling both through like that. I take my tail, I wrap it around, I pull through, stick it back in, wrap it around, and pull through. And I'm just gonna tighten both ends. And I'm going to slide that down a little bit. Tighter. Okay. So what I'm going to do, same thing as last time. I'm gonna start with a slip knot, but I'm gonna show you, this is why you wanna do a slip knot first. Or I'm sorry, not a slip knot, but a slip stitch. Because if you start right in with the single crochet, do you see how how that dark blue now becomes part of my stitch. So what happens is you have these nice neat rings and then you have that extra that extra color um, kind of creeping up and it just doesn't look as nice. So that is why we always start with a slip stitch just to get it horizontal. So as you can see now it's that blue is laying flat and it looks really nice. So for this row um, Personally, I like to grab both um, stitches, the front and the back loops, not just the back loop. Um, again, I just, I like the look of it with the exception of the very first one. Um, we're gonna have to put six single crochets into this first stitch and it just gets really tight at the beginning. So um, I just usually do the back loop and um, it looks fine, but we just, we won't tell anybody. So um, we are going to do three single crochets to start. So one, two, and three. Now that we are starting on a corner. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna chain one like that, and then we're gonna go right back in. So for another three. So there's one, oof, two, and three. Okay, now normally for granny squares, um, you do a chain before you go to the next shell. Um, shells are just like usually groups of three, um, either single crochets or double crochets. We're just using singles for, for our little mini squares. So I'm actually not gonna do that. I'm gonna skip this stitch though, and I'm gonna go to the next one, but I'm not gonna chain. I'm just gonna go ahead, go straight into my next three. And three. Same thing, I'm not going to chain, I'm gonna skip. So I'm gonna skip this one, go to this one. And this is my corner, so I'm gonna do three to start. 
I'm gonna chain one. Um, by chaining one, that just makes those corners extra pointy. Go back in for another three. All right, and you got it. So we're just gonna keep repeating that until we meet um, the end again. And I did not start. I did not use the, the part of the yarn that comes out easy out of my skein. Of course, I have to make things difficult. So again, we're just repeating. So skip, do another one of three. Okay, I'm gonna skip, go to the next one. Again, this one is a corner. So, oof, chain one to make it pointy. Great. Skip that one. Go to this one. I'm gonna skip, make the corner. Chain one, pointy. All right, and we're actually gonna end with the middle piece. So again, I'm not going to chain, I'm just gonna skip. I'm gonna go into this one. Do a shell of three. Let's see the other thing, this yarn. Sometimes I have trouble getting all the strands or I'll get too many strands, so. Okay, so to finish, um, we're actually, at least this is just kind of my preference. Um, instead of, of connecting and doing a slip stitch with this first light blue. I'm actually gonna skip that one and I'm gonna go to the next stitch, pull through. It just makes it look, I don't know, a little nicer and neater. Um, so now we're gonna chain one. We're going to cut, we're going to pull, and then we're gonna pull again just to make that tight. All right, and now we need to cut off our blue as well. We're gonna give that a little bit of a tug because that is going to make sure that our stitch is nice and tight. We're gonna go ahead and tie. And we are going to cut. Now, um, because we're making 40 of these and we have you know, different yarn changes with each. I am not messing around with um, tucking in the ends of my yarn. So, and it's really okay because we're gonna be connecting all these together anywhere, anyway, these squares. Um, so you're really not gonna see the ends. And if you're making this for the kitty couch, the back is gonna go on the end of the couch anyway, so no one's really gonna see. Um, but obviously if you're making, you know, like a full version granny square, um, then you'll want to tuck in ends and make it look nice. All right, so we're gonna cut. All right, and there we go. So that's our little square. Um, the next step is that you are going to go ahead, you're gonna make 10 of those, and then you're gonna go ahead and do the same thing that we just did with these different color combinations. So square two, square three, and square four. When you have all 40, then we are going to go ahead and um, in the next video, I'm going to explain how to assemble all of these together, okay?